Welcome everyone to the Rosie and Bill Show. Our guest tonight is an accomplished artist with a powerful voice and a positive outlook on life. He's also a member of a musical supergroup united to reimagine and keep alive songs from some of the biggest musical icons in music history. Mm-hmm. Please welcome to the Rosie and Bill Show from the undercovers, Kevin Pauls. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you guys, this is great. Thank you for having me. We're so glad to have you, Kevin. And we're curious because your group is so unique and you put out such fascinating covers. How did the three of you meet up and start this musical journey? Well, it happened for the first guy that I got to connect with would have been Joel. So there's there's Joel Parisian and Luke McMaster that are that make up the uh, the undercovers. And uh, I was doing a big Christmas show in in my hometown of Kitchener, Ontario. And we were we had people like Michelle Wright, the 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 tenors. We had a hundred voice choir, and I needed somebody to be my musical director. He was the lead singer. Joel was the lead singer of a group called uh, the New World Sun, which had a bunch of number one, uh, number or top ten hits, anyways, in the Christian world. And uh, and he lived not very far from me, and so we kind of connected. I brought him in. That was fourteen years ago, and we've just decided that. I didn't want to do any other shows without Joel. He's one of the most amazing singers and piano players and musical guys. So we kind of connected that way. I also did what's called uh, performance coaching. So I would work with a lot of artists, help them put their shows together. Luke McMaster was a pop sensation here in Canada. He had a bunch of uh, top, he was kind of like the, the the Backstreet Boys of Canada, if you will. And they toured with NSYNC and uh, he started out on a solo career. And so his manager calls me and says, I want you to work with Luke. Well, we were in the room together for about 30 seconds and we became best friends. <laughs> and so Joel and Luke and I have known to get known each other for, uh, you know, 10 to 14 years. And this has just been something that we've, our friendship has evolved. Our musical collaboration has evolved. And uh, when COVID hit and Kenny died, we I, I, I wanted to do something, you know, to to represent Kenny. And, and this just started the evolution of, of this growth of what would this look like? And I brought in Joel and Luke. And so we've known each other for a lot of years, but this, this evolution of taking it to this specific band and this specific show has been many years in the making. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate each and every one of you. And we also appreciate our first and longest running sponsor of the show, Tom and his team of insurance professionals at the Malin Agency. If world-class customer service and doing business with someone you can trust is important to you, give Tom and his team a call today for all your insurance needs. Your name of the group. Mm. We know you do covers, but how did you come up with the name The Undercovers? Well, one of the things, it's, it sounds a little bit silly when we say this, but one of the things we wanted to do is our, our show is, I, I don't know really exactly how to say it. We wanted to make it a little bit more high class. We didn't want to be a garage band. We we wanted to have really sharp looking clothes and we wanted to we wanted to look really sharp on stage. Well, when we got some of the photos, we're like, this looks like like we're like undercover cops or something like this. And we were trying to be really cool. And Joel said, we need to be called the undercovers. And it was literally that simple. We went, oh, I like that. The double entendre kind of on what that is all about. So we wanted to, we wanted the, everyone to understand that, yes, we're doing covers, but we are not a cover band by by what that typically means. We aren't there with costumes and wigs. Not that that's bad. Some people like the ABBA groups, they, they're amazing. The Eagle tributes, that's what they do. We didn't want to do artists to be those artists. We wanted to pay tribute to, first of all, the first show, which is Rogers, Richie and Robinson, Kenny Rogers, Lana Richie and Smokey Robinson. We're paying tribute to amazing songs that kind of revolutionized pop music. But we didn't want to lose the artistry of, of what we do. And so we we didn't want to just be, we're not Rogers, Richard, and Robinson as a group. We're the undercovers paying tribute to music that, that moves us. Because if it moves us and we get to portray it the way it moves us, we hope that it will move our audiences. 
Well, it does. And the artistry that you just spoke of is masterful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We, we, we are having such a blast taking these songs. I'll tell you, I've been singing, I've been performing for 40 years. I have never enjoyed being on stage as much as I'm enjoying being on stage right now. Doing this kind of music, songs that, that I grew up listening to, it, it's absolutely a blast. And I'm hoping that the love that we have for these songs is what's coming over the stage and, and through the, uh, the airwaves when people hear this, because that we genuinely are having that much fun performing it. So, Kevin, I, I have to uh, go to a question I was going to ask later before I ask my next one, because it just jumped out at me as you were saying what you were saying with that passion that you said it. Mm. So I have to ask you, do you love what you're doing with the undercovers more than you love chicken wings? OK, that's a great question, because I'm, I'm going to go for chicken wings after this interview. So <laughs> it's it's still touch and go. I'm not going to lie to you. It's touch and go. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Just, just had to check because I, I just great. I love, I love it. it. And, you know, I also mentioned in, in the introduction about the reimagining. And I think that's really important. And I put that in there for a purpose because you guys put your signature on yeah. these songs and you mentioned Kenny Rogers. But how did Smokey and Lionel get added to the mix? So for me, Kenny and Lionel have been tied. So back uh, in 82, um, Lionel Richie and Kenny Rogers connected with Lady. But mm. then his record company decided we're, we're going to bring Lionel in for an entire album. They did an album called Share Your Love, where he produced the entire album. He wrote a lot of the songs, but he produced the entire album. And the more you dive into their relationship, they became best friends. They are like, they were like really, really tight as people. But the interesting piece of this is that Lionel Richie's actually more country than Kenny Rogers is. He grew up in Tuskegee, Alabama, and, and he, his roots were down home country. And so that was really intriguing to us. When Luke McMaster, he did an album a few years ago that tributed Smokey Robinson. And we were having this conversation because I started a show called Rogers and Richie. I tested it down in Florida. I went to a few places. I wanted to see, does this work? People love this music. And so he had a he had this Smokey Robinson album. And we said, well, why don't we add another R to this? And then we started <laughs> researching it. And he actually got to spend some time with Smokey. Smokey called him out of the blue and said, I love what you're doing. And he's like, he thought it was a crank call. He ended up flying to LA, hanging out with Smokey. Smokey's then come to Niagara Falls, called us. We ended up partying with, with Smokey Robinson. And he's going, Luke's version and your guy's version of Baby Baby is the best version I've ever heard. And then he starts telling us personally the love he has for Lionel Richie and the love he had for Kenny Rogers. He golfed with Kenny. He hang out, he's hung out with Lionel all of their life. So the, the relationship and Kenny Rogers 50th anniversary, the only guys he had was Lionel and Smokey. The connection between the three of them, as we started to, to talk about this show was, was blowing us away. And then getting to sit down with Smokey and actually ask him these questions and have him tell us this. It was, we're like, okay, this is, we're on the right, we're on something here. This is, this is actually matters. It's really cool. Yeah. I don't think you could get much more of a clearer sign than that, that you guys were doing the right thing. And this was a, a classic example of everything happens for a reason. Yeah, really. M my follow-up question though, now that we definitely understand how everything's intertwined as far as those three R's, when you look at the repertoire and the songs and the catalog, oh. how did you go about picking the songs that you're using in the current tour i mean how difficult was it? we we fought a lot <laughs> because the the funny thing is so so joel is really we've turned a lot of the reins of the of the musical part to joel joel's joel is a really brilliant musician well so is luke but we were we had to have somebody to say i love all this but this works better and so we were, I, I put out the songs I love from all three. Um, and part of it is whose voice sings it. You know, we are, I don't just do all Kenny's. I don't do all Lionel's. I don't, we all want it to be a little bit of a mixture. 
And so there's certain voice, like I love singing lady. I re reimagine just ever so slightly the way I would sing lady. One of my favorite songs of all time. Absolutely love it. Joel's voice, the way he started singing hello, when we were in, in rehearsal, we were like, oh, that, that works. So there was, there was some elements that we, we threw out. We threw some songs out that were huge hits because we went, this doesn't, this just doesn't work. So, and we picked a couple of songs that are kind of deep cuts songs that maybe you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have known, or maybe didn't hit the top 40, but are great songs for a good reason for the show. So it was painstaking and, and we had some arguments over it. I'll tell you, there was, there were some songs I definitely wanted in there and they're like, no, no, that doesn't work. And then, so we ended up with, a, I think, a nice mixture, but um, songs that moved us and that could be translated to an audience. That's that's it. But it was not easy. How important is compromise in keeping this group going? Oh, well, you know the answer, right? I mean, it, it's huge. Now, the one thing I will tell you, all three of us have been touring. I've been touring for 40 years. The other guy's 35 ish. We have been solo acts for so long, but there's something about getting on the other side of 50 where your ego just goes, I'm done. I, I want to have fun. I want to be surrounded by guys. These guys are like literally like my brothers. I'm not saying that because I'm in an interview. I'm saying that because that's actually the truth. I take a bullet for these guys mm -hmm. and I, I love these guys like they are my family and we we get along very well, very different personalities. But I realized that the what, what we bring as a whole is far better than anything I could do on my own. And so some of the days when you go, oh, I wish I was just doing this on my own. <laughs> I realized that the product is so much, is so far superior to anything I could do on my own that it's, it's worth the compromise. And I know what they bring to the table. And so... There's there's the odd day of there's some tension, but for the most part, we really respect each other as soloists. And um, there's nothing better than the three of us singing together. I'll tell you, that's that's what we couldn't believe is the magic that happened because we have three very distinct voices. And when we started singing together, it was it was magical. And we went, there, I think we have something here. I think we have something that's that's worthwhile bringing to the masses. Right. Yeah, that's true. And it, like you said, the, the whole supersedes the personal ego. Yeah, for sure. How, yeah. what is the process like when you're creating arrangements? We all have ideas. I'll tell you again, I, I really default to Joel and, and Luke, Luke is an incredible song. Luke's written songs for Rihanna. He wrote songs for 98 degrees, Nick Lachey, a lot of television shows. He's had a number one hit with Jim Brickman. The guy's a, a writing machine. Those two guys are the producers and the arrangers. I have ideas and sometimes they use them. <laughs> and sometimes they say, how about you just shut up and sing, Kevin? We'll, we'll tell you what to sing. But for the most part, it's collaborative. I mean, I know when I'm, for, for instance, for Lady, play the piano, play the song. I'm going to interpret the arrangement the way I want to interpret it. And if they've got ideas, they tell me. But when, uh, for instance, when we did uh, The Gambler, Joel grew up in a very kind of a, a very ethnically diverse part of Toronto. There was all kinds of people there, but there was a lot of Jamaicans. And they made him feel like he was uncool because he didn't know anything about country music. The Jamaicans had this love for country music. And so we kind of mixed some of that stuff that he grew up hearing and we mix it in with uh, a little bit of a Caribbean style the way we did. So when you when you have an idea and you test it out and we look at each other and there's consensus, we go, yeah, let's 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 make it happen. So it is it's very collaborative, but I don't get into the minutia the way they two do. Those two are better musicians and better producers than I am. One of the things that, that jumps out at me also, Kevin, is just the whole, from what I've seen in the clips and in the videos, there's not a whole lot of bells and whistles. Like things are kind of stripped down in an acoustic type format where really the focus is on your voices, on yeah. the songs. 
And and I really love that. So was that part of it by design also? You know what? It it didn't just happen. It was exactly by design. There's a couple of things that we did. We produced this show for Florida. We produced this show for people 55, 60 plus. We are finding that some younger people like it because they've heard Lionel or they've heard some Kenny or, or some Smokey. But we did this for a reason. When you see a lot of big tribute acts going into a two, three, 400 seat theater, drums, bass, seven players, horns, often the 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 uh, the impression is, oh, I, I love the music, but I couldn't really hear the words or I didn't hear the harmonies. And mm -hmm. we knew we wanted to do two things. One, it's expensive to travel with a full band. And it's time consuming. When you show up and have to do a sound check, you never really get it right when you're changing all the time. We went piano, guitar, three voices, and some tracks that will give some percussive or some strings. We did not want to add. We wanted, we wanted addition by subtraction. So when they hear, they're going to hear the lyrics, they're going to hear the harmonies. There's some, there's some piano vocal that's just that or guitar vocals. And then we add some track and we are finding people are going, oh, you can turn it up and it's not volume. It's they're just hearing the music the way it's supposed to be. So they can focus on the here on the lyrics. They can focus on the melodies and the harmonies. And that's what stands out. So 100%, I'm so glad you said that. It's it's exactly what we wanted to do is produce a show that's easy to produce and does not freak people out. They walk in and go, oh, no, this is great. This is, I can hear every word. It's beautiful. And then yeah, when you guys can, when you can sing the way you guys do, mm. you don't really need the music. That's the beautiful part of it. Not only can you, can you hear the words, but you can hear them being sung the way that you guys are doing it, which is phenomenal. Thank you. And that was that was our intention and, and our hope that that we could perform these songs to to the extent where people are going, oh, here's the other piece. When when you take a song and don't try to do it exactly like the people uh, that the original people did it, what it allows and what we are finding is that it's allowing an audience to fall in love with these songs again. So we have we've we've got a new CD that's that's coming out. We just literally got it. They're waiting for us in Florida for the shows that are happening in November. Um, we're finding people going, I, I want to hear your version of that because they love the song, but they're falling in love with the with the melody and with some of the harmonies and just the subtle changes that make them go, oh man, I, I forgot how much I like that song. And they're they're responding. So we're we're enjoying that. And there's something about songs that are relatable. And that's why people, I think, do enjoy cover bands so much is because, well, they know the song and then you guys come in and you're so talented and you do have a unique spin occasionally, just enough. Yes. So like you said, to breathe new life into it. So so that's really good. Earlier, you talked about The Gambler and that music video that you did. And we understand that it is getting close to a million views. How cool yeah, is like, that? Uh, the islands in the stream went up to about 675 really quickly. And we're like, this is this is nuts. And the gambler, uh, I think it's at like six or 970,000 yeah. views or something right now. And and it's continuing to climb. And it, yeah, that kind of blows me away. It's But what it shows you is that this music, people want me, at least my age and higher, want to have music they know and uh and i hope it also means that they're enjoying the versions we're doing <laughs> so that's pretty cool yeah and i think it's it's also when you think about it it's kind of a bold move with certain songs to put your spin on it so to speak because it doesn't always work no. but clearly that version of the gambler and what you talked about earlier as far as some of those influences in that feel in that song definitely come through and yeah. I have to admit, uh, of those 970,000 views, I'm probably responsible for 10 or 11 of them, at least myself, because I just I love it. That's watch great. it again. It's so cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you know, it, it is a risk. It's always a risk when you do that. I guess you, one of the things we have to believe is that we're we're not straying too far from the original. The Gambler is probably more of a stray than some of the other stuff. 
but we don't want to stray so far where people don't know what the song is. We want to stray just far enough to make it interesting for people to go, oh, I know this song, but oh, this is kind of a cool version. And so we we kind of we're straddling that line at times. And I hope we I hope we always stay in a in in the space that people can really enjoy it. Kevin, I'm curious, do you all live close by each other? We we do actually. So we're all from Canada. We're in southern Ontario. So I live in a place called Kitchener, um, which is about an hour from Hamilton. And Hamilton is at the uh, right at the tip of Lake Ontario. And uh, Joel and Luke both live in Hamilton. So we're only an hour apart. So we see each other all the time, whether we want to or not. <laughs> I was just wondering if you do much rehearsing in person or how you work that to get tight on, on your show. So Joel and Luke both have a studio in their home. And so uh, we tend to go to Joel uh, to, to Luke's studio and we'll work through new stuff and we can record it and see how we like it. So for the most part, uh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm the one doing the driving. So I'll drive down, but we are, we're able to, to work through arrangements and we're going to be doing a lot more of that in the new year. Uh, not only just the Rogers, Richie and Robinson, but we're going to be doing a lot more covers down in their studio uh, live. So uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be the fun part. This is, this is what's so fun. This is music that matters to us. So when we get a chance to to do it together, we love rehearsals. I mean, we just, we don't care if there's an audience. We just actually like singing together. So it's a lot of fun. Well, that, that definitely helps. Now, Kevin, you just touched on something that I wanted to ask about, and I don't know what you may or may not be able to share, but what does the future look like in general for the undercovers? Well, I think I, there's definitely a couple more shows or iterations of the Rogers, Ritchie, and Robinson we could do. Um, but we're also exploring where would we go with this? Um, we don't want to... We don't want to pigeonhole ourselves to just doing Kenny Rogers, Lionel Richie, and Smokey Robinson. I mean, there's so many artists I would like to do, and so same with them. So we're we're exploring that because this is the this is the um, the whole idea behind the undercovers is that a we don't pigeonhole ourselves, and b we can continue to come up with new artists, new ideas. If people get to know that the undercovers are doing it, I'm hopefully they will get to like the fact that we reimagine stuff so that we can go back to places. We're already going back to a couple of places, like the Key West Theater in, in Key West, which is the reason it's called the Key West Theater. Uh, we did a show there and, and tickets are selling way faster this time we're back there. We did the same thing. We played a couple of gated communities up in Stewart, Florida. We're playing the Lyric Theater. I mean, it's probably going to be sold out. This is the thing that's starting to happen is that they love the Rogers, Ritchie, and Robinson, but they're starting to know who we are a little bit now. And so that's going to give us the opportunity to, you know, to explore some other artists down the road. So that's where we kind of want to want to take this because we all got we all got other artists we'd love to to you know other songs we'd like to sing and how will we package that we'll we'll figure that out but first of all there's a lot more Kenny Lionel and Smokey that we can do so we'll probably do a little bit of that before we venture too far well the good news is that you're building your name recognition your brand recognition mm -hmm. and people will buy tickets if they know they can trust the artist that's the goal thank you i mean that cuz that is that's the truth and so we're we're, we're cognizant of trying to build the brand of the undercovers that you're going to hopefully get a classy show. It's not going to be bombastic. It's not going to be super loud and crazy, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting because we tell stories too. We've, you know, we've got to meet Smokey. I got to meet Kenny. Um, I know some of the people that played in Kenny's band. I know some of the people that played with Lionel. And so we were able to talk a little bit about these artists and the stories. And so that's the kind of stuff we want. And hopefully people come and go, oh, I like what they did. I'd go to an undercover show no matter what they're playing. That's that's the ultimate goal. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Kevin, yeah, I wanted to ask you, Kevin, something about you personally, because it literally comes through every time you say something. And it's something I mentioned right at the top, your positive outlook. So oh, where does you. that positive outlook and attitude come from? Because it purely emanates from you and, and it's very enjoyable. Well, I'll tell you, I... I don't really know. 
I, I just know that I've never been negative. I've had negative times. I've had bad days. I've had bad things happen. I, it was a, I believe it was just a God given thing. I, I, I mean, I grew up in the church. I know a lot of people that grew up in the church that do not have a positive outlook. So that's not necessarily just that, but I just have, I have the ability that I believe was just God given to just look at the, at the, the glass being half full. And so I love doing, and I get to do what I, what I love. I'm not stuck doing something. I may not have this outlook if I was stuck doing something I hated. I'm very fortunate. I grew up singing. I've been doing this and touring for 40 years. How could I not have a positive outlook when I get to do something I love this much with guys I genuinely love? I genuinely feel like they're family. I got three kids, seven grandkids. I've been married for 36 years. What's not to be happy about? Right. Wow. Well, Love it. That's, that's inspirational. And on that note, we can't end better than that. Oh, we you. want to thank you so much, Kevin. And we look forward to hearing all the songs that you've got coming out and checking you guys out in person, hopefully at some point. I Yeah, I hope so. You let us know. We'll have you in front row. Okay, sounds great. And folks, check out the undercovers. You'll love them. We thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. My mama told me, you better shop around. Oh, yeah, you better shop around. Tracks of my tears. Well, I'm easy. Ooh. I said I'm easy like Sunday morning. Lady, for so many years I thought I'd never find you. Islands in the street. This week's episode has been brought to you by Doherty & Company Insurance Services for all your business and personal insurance needs. Our friends at Tennis Addiction in Exton, PA. And the Mallon Agency, where exceeding expectations is how they do business.